This is a quick look at real toxicity prompts, evaluating neural toxic degeneration in language models. Language models are becoming more accessible to the mainstream every day, for instance with OpenAI and Gmail Autocomplete. But there have already been many instances where they've generated problematic text. We were interested in understanding if pre-trained language models are safe to deploy for text generation and how we can evaluate the toxicity of their generations in a systematic way. Our paper, Real Toxicity Prompts, offers some ideas. We present an evaluation framework for measuring toxicity in natural language generation using a large data set of naturally occurring prompts. We find many innocuous prompts that induce toxic degeneration in pre-trained language models. We also evaluate mechanisms for steering away from toxic degenerations, but ultimately we find that all models are able to generate toxicity under our framework. Last, we discover pervasive toxicity in the training data of recent language models. To establish a baseline, we first generate without prompts a number of times for each model. We calculate the expected maximum toxicity, which is the worst case toxicity for a given number of generations. Using this, we find that all models will eventually generate highly toxic generations, even when they're given no prompt. We then turn to prompted settings. We release real toxicity prompts, which is a data set of 100,000 census prefixes collected from internet text. The prompts are of varying level of toxicity, so we can evaluate language models under different conditions. Using real toxicity prompts, we create an evaluation framework for measuring generation toxicity of language models. Our evaluation framework consists of two steps. The first is that we generate a completion of a prompt using a pre-trained language model like GPT-2. We generate 25 samples using a sampling decoding technique. We then score all completions using a commercially available toxicity detector, Perspective API in this case. We use our evaluation framework on a set of popular pre-trained models and we find many non-toxic prompts that induce toxic degeneration in all models. We then evaluate multiple detoxification methods and find that PPLM, or plug and play language models, and domain adaptation are the most effective at steering away from toxicity. But we note that no detoxification methods are foolproof. In addition to the results shown, we also evaluate with GPT-3, Control, and GPT-1. And last, we argue that language models acquire toxicity from their pre-training data. We performed the first large-scale toxicity analyses of GPT-2's training data, WebText, and its open source clone, OpenWebText. And we find that at least 2-5% to of these corpora may be toxic. We also find a significant amount of content that appears on fake news and ideologically extreme websites or banned subreddits. This work was completed by myself, Sachin Guru Rangan, Martin Sapp, Yejin Choi, and Noah A. Smith at the University of Washington and the Allen Institute for AI. Thank you for listening.